I had a pretty catastrophic uh, education. Um, I got into grammar school. Uh, Lord knows how, but um, I didn't respond well to, uh, to authority. Uh, and I was hopeless at exams. They're pretty good at what today they call coursework, although I didn't know that term then. Um, but this guy was... Um, this, this guy did, did uh, uh, get to me. He, he, did, uh, he did introduce me to a lot, of, uh, a lot of writing that I'd never thought about before. And I'm very grateful to him, and I've, I've, I've said so publicly, and I've, I, I've even, in my nursery rhymes book, I even uh, wrote him a poem. Um, I never did find out his first name. And he had a nickname, I think. Was it Ab... Um, he had a big black beard, which was very unusual in the 1950s when I was going to grammar school. Um, and he had a big black beard, so we all called him Abdul. Um, uh, Abdul Rowe was his name. I can, <coughs> let me see. I speak of a teacher long ago. <laughs> Whose nickname then was Abdul Rowe. <laughs> and uh, no, he was a wonderful man, and uh, he did expose me uh, to certain types of writing that I'd never experienced before. Uh, and uh, I think it did uh, many, many years later, decades later. I did. I, I, I think that paid um, that paid huge dividends. Uh, but sadly, by then, Abdul uh, Abdul had met a, a lovely Swedish lady and gone to live in Sweden and died. <laughs> so I never did get to say thank you. It's interesting how influences, um, <clears throat> particularly great writing, can spur someone so young. You know, I, I detect, I'm not sure whether I'm correct here, I could be way off beam, but that there is some John Donne somewhere that you've read. Well, obviously I revere John Donne and so does any, so does anyone who writes poetry, I would, I would guess be hard not to. Um, and I like all the metaphysicals. Uh, you know, uh, there, there are no, th 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 none of his contemporaries are of no interest to me. They're all of interest to me, Herrick especially. Um, but uh, no, John Donne was a fabulous poet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I would certainly put him uh, within the, uh, within the, uh, my, my Desert Island Discs, uh, top eight of uh, poets that have had the most effect upon me. I, th I think that's evident in what I've read of, of your poems, that your command of metre and um, just writing a good sonnet, I mean, it's an interesting form to write a poem in. Um, but more so than that, I think, the comparison with um, the natural world that, that Don reflected is there in your poetry. The natural world seems important to you. I think the wellspring of all, uh, all inspiration, not just in uh, poetry, you know, in the end, it, it, it must come from the natural world around you. I mean, obviously, uh, what Jean-Paul Sartre does with it is, uh, is, uh, is Monsieur Sartre's uh, business, but that's where the wellspring is. Um, you know, we are animals, and uh, we we live um, we live in a in a world uh, uh, that we didn't create, surrounded by um, uh, extraordinary life forms uh, about which we know very little. So, <clears throat> for me anyway, and I'm sure for most people, that's where that's where the wellspring of inspiration lies. Not least in. Uh, uh, animals like ourselves, uh, other humans that we don't understand either. Um, so it, it's got to come. It, it, it's got to come from that. But obviously, one of the things I like about Dunn, especially uh, his, um, especially the early poetry, you know, before he became a divine, <laughs> um, you know, is uh, that you know his caustic wit and lustiness. Um, you know where he curses the sun because it's risen, and is um, th throwing um, a beam of light into his uh, into the bedroom where he's lying with his mistress. Um, but even there, you know, the, it, it's interesting uh, 
the, 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 um, that a natural event like the sun apparently rising to us, because of course the sun doesn't rise, um, ha, uh, you know, created one of the great lines uh, in, English, uh, in English poetry. And uh, uh, most of the great lines uh, that I can think of in English poetry are based in the, the natural world. They, they come from they come from the, they come from nature, and of course, as a fully fledged atheist, um, to me, you know, humans are nothing but a part of nature. There is nothing supernatural about us or about our existence. Sadly. <laughs> thing that amazes me so much is that there's so much um, strife and animosity from one set of people to another and yet you can look at a sunrise or a sunset as you've been describing as Dunn saw and wrote about so movingly and isn't that something we can share? Yes we could probably share it if we <coughs> stood together like bonobos, those lovely pygmy chimpanzees or are they pygmy gorillas? I think they're the closest thing to humans on the planet, I believe. I've been introduced to a bonobo. You don't look at a bonobo, you do meet a bonobo. He looks you straight in the eye. Uh, we'd be like bonobos, wouldn't we? If we all, all we did was share the wonder of sunsets and hand each other food and groom each other's fur. Um, there is strife, of course, amongst uh, all primates, uh, but not as much as we create. But what kind of a world would it be? You know, if the First World War hadn't occurred, I wouldn't have had the First World War poets. You know, steady on. <laughs> and, it was uh, all for as that. A, as, a, as, a hideous, uh, uh, as a hideous critic uh, once uh, pointed out, uh, but poets are ruthless uh, individuals and uh, Keats' uh, Ode on a Grecian Urn is worth any number of little old ladies. And I'm very sorry to tell you that I completely agree with him. <laughs> um, not that I would harm any little old ladies. Um, but I don't think it's a cause really for regret that human beings are a quar quarrelsome tribe. Because without them being quarrelsome, we would live as eco-fundamentalists uh, and environmental Nazis want you to live now. Uh, they applaud the fact that I used to be able to get on an aeroplane at Heathrow, which I did three or four hundred times, and arrive in New York before I took off three and a half hours later. They applaud the fact that that aeroplane no longer flies. If we don't go on, if we don't find a way out of this little planet without using rocket fuel, which is obviously idiotic, if we don't find a way to colonise other places, either in the solar system or further afield, then we're goners. That, that's obvious. There's already six billion of us, soon there'll be 12. Um, we, can, we could probably support 12. And I'm no Malthus, but I don't think we could support 24 billion. <laughs>